Well, praise the Lord, everybody. If you feel like I do, you know that the Lord is blessing us. And when is he blessing us? He's blessing us right now. Go ahead and give God a shout of praise because God has been good to us. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves, and he's worthy to be praised. Welcome to another worship experience here at Chapel Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am the Reverend Lester J. Drayton, Jr., pastor of this very fine church. And again, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us in worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Will you join with me as we pray this morning? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing that you have poured upon us in this moment. And God, we say thank you for your heavenly benediction, your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness toward us. Because Lord, truly you have been good to us. We ask, Lord, that you would invoke your presence into this sacred space. Make this space that we're in holy for you to do your best work. And I'm not just talking about in our immediate surroundings. I'm talking about in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. Transform us, oh God, uh, to be the children, obedient children of God that are gathered around your altar, anxious and ready to hear a word from you. Lord, we will not fail nor neglect to give your name glory, honor, and praise because there truly is none like you in all the earth. And we thank you and we bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, before we go to the prayer, there's something I just thought about that I want to make mention to you. Hopefully you're going out to the polls to cast your vote. You're not going to wait till November the 3rd which happens to be election day, but we want to encourage you to go and, and take care of that now. We, I'm sure we're going to say a, a little bit more about that as we get further into the worship service, but I want to make sure that you've heard from me. If you have not exercised your right to vote, go do it now. And if you have any issues regarding um, not the information in terms of what you need to know or, or even help to get to the polls and you need someone to help you, reach out to us and we'll find somebody that can help you. Now let's transition to our prayer list this morning because we do have a number of people that we want to pray for. All those persons who have been on our prayer list, we ask that you would continually lift them up. I do want to highlight Sister Mildred Page. Um, we want to lift her up today because um, she's, she's been having some struggles and, and, and you know, as best as she can with that sweet, sweet spirit that she has, uh, um, the challenges sometimes uh, are sometimes more than what one person can bear. But because she has a blessed church family, we're going to lift her up in prayer this morning, not just uh, for her physical healing and recovery, but for God to give her peace in her heart and mind. Um, uh, truly, um, you know, when we think about the things that people go through uh, day in and day out, sometimes they come so, co so close together and they can't seem to compound on the person to where that extra push, that extra help uh, would make the difference. I also want to mention Sister Bessie Murray, uh, along with e everyone else who's in convalescent centers and nursing homes. That we, you continue to pray for them as well. And we want to lift up all those persons uh, who are in bereavement, and particularly uh, those who've been um, negatively impacted by the uh, coronavirus. Continue to pray for them and pray for the state of our, our nation and anything that the Lord lays on your heart, because truly we are standing in the need of prayer. Now at this time, enjoy these announcements. Hello everyone. My name is Kara Davis, and these are your announcements for the week. Election season is now upon us. People are going to the polls to vote, and we encourage you to do the same. The state of South Carolina is in a state of emergency due to the impact of the global pandemic. And for that reason, you can vote early through the absentee process. To vote in-person absentee, you can visit the County Voter Registration Office in your county of residence, complete an application, list state of emergency as the reason for voting absentee, and cast your ballot. In Richland County, there are some additional early voting sites available. Go to our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com and click Early Voting Calendar for a list of available sites and hours of operation. For your convenience, you can view a sample of the ballot 
by clicking View a Sample Ballot on our Connect page. Enter your name and address to see the ballot containing every office you will be voting on. If you are voting absentee by mail, you would have needed to request an absentee application already as it is now too late to do so. Complete, sign, and return your application as soon as possible. Then you will receive an absentee ballot in the mail. Follow the instructions to complete your ballot and return it to the voter registration office in your county of residence before November 1st, 2020. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Exercise your right to vote. Every vote matters. Every vote counts. The Columbia District Lay Organization has secured Lay Vote lapel pins, which are now available for purchase. These pins are a way to remind us to vote not only in the presidential election, but all elections. The cost of each pin is $10. Sister Yvette Vance, our Lay Organization president, is who you will contact at 803-781-6128. Again, that is 803-781-6128. To have your pins delivered to you, please contact Sister Yvette Vance. We thank you in advance for purchasing a lapel voting pin in support of our church. Members, mark your calendars for our first quarterly conference, which will take place on Thursday, October 29th at 6.30 p.m. The Reverend Rosalind Coleman, presiding elder of the Columbia District, will preside this meeting. All clergy and officers are expected to be in attendance, and the newly appointed stewards will be confirmed. Again, the first quarterly conference with presiding Elder Coleman will be held on Thursday, October 29th at 6.30 p.m. This meeting will be held using Zoom. Here are this week's schedule of events. Join us at 11.30 this morning for Church for Kids, a church service designed especially for kids ages 2 through 12. We invite you to all join us at Church for Kids on Zoom. I will give you the information on how to connect shortly. There will be a second church conference scheduled tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. This is the conclusion of the annual meeting where the work of the ministry for this conference year is planned. We still have one remaining trustee position to fill. And in order to conduct the election, a link to the ballot was sent to a confirmed email address that are in our system. The purpose for this is to confirm that you are a full member of Chapel Memorial. If you do not have an email address, but would still like to vote in the elections, a physical ballot can be given to you based on the arrangements made to do so. All ballots must be turned in today at 5 p.m. A sealed ballot box is placed at the church for you to vote in anonymously and confidentially. If you have any questions about the election process, please contact Pastor Drayton as soon as possible. This meeting will be held using Zoom. We will hold the intercessory prayer conference call on Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. And we invite you to join us. The conference call number is 515-604-9024. And the access code is 120111. Remember, prayer is the foundation for all victory. Are you an overcomer? Then we invite you to join the Overcomers Bible Study this Wednesday at 6 p.m. The Overcomers Bible Study is held on Zoom. The notes for this week are now available at our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com. Have you taken time to visit our Connect page lately? It's the most effective way to stay informed with all things related to our church, on the local level, on the Episcopal level, and even on the connectional level. It is the one place to go to get everything you need, from submitting your prayer requests to listening to sermons online to getting information about voting. Log on to fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com today. Get informed, get encouraged, and get connected. Here's how to connect with us on Zoom. The web address is on your screen. Please be sure to write it down exactly how it appears and save it because it never changes. You may also click on the Zoom icon on our Connect page. If you don't have a device with a camera or you just want to be a phone participant, just call any of the numbers you see listed on the screen and enter the meeting ID, which is also on the screen. Once again, save this information as it never changes. Church for Kids, the Church Conference, the Overcomers Bible Study, as well as Church School will meet using Zoom. At this time, we would like to wish everyone celebrating a birthday this week a very happy birthday. We would like to wish Samantha Drayton a happy birthday as she celebrates her birthday on Tuesday, October 20th. Happy birthday, Samantha. May God give you the desires of your heart today. 
We also want to wish Jordan Black a happy birthday as she celebrates her birthday on Friday, October 23rd. Happy birthday, Jordan. To everyone else celebrating a birthday this week, we wish you a happy birthday and may God bless you with many, many more. This is Kara Davis and these were your announcements for this week. God bless. At this time, we invite you to join us as we worship the Lord through our giving this morning. Uh, and as we have stated at the beginning of this experience, that the Lord has been blessing us. And, and if God has been blessing you, and you know that the Lord has been good to you, won't you be a blessing to him by sowing a seed in this ministry? Listen, you don't have to be a member of this church. If you're watching and you believe that the Lord has been blessing you through this ministry, uh, won't you make the sacrifice in sowing a love offering to uh, our ministry? The various ways that you can give to us is, list, is right there on your screen. If you want to uh, send us a check or a money order, you can send it to our post, post office box address that you see listed there on the screen. If you want to give it to us electronically, just go to our website at uh, chapelmemorial.org. Uh, click on the green online the green Give Online button that you see is similar to the one that you see at the corner of this screen. Uh, click that button and be able to give to us. If you have Giverfly on your device, go to Giverfly and look for Chapel Memorial AME Church. You can give that way, or you can just simply text your offering to us by texting uh, your offering to the number 321-234-5005. Either way, um, the, you could be uh, a blessing to us and we pray that God will continually bless you, however he sees fit to do so, because truly God is blessing us. Let us pray at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you for these gifts that we're about to receive. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel, and for the equipping of the saints. Let it become bread for the hungry, as well as shelter for the homeless. And Lord, we will not fail nor neglect to give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you for your faithful stewardship. As we transition to the word of God, I invite you to join me in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. And for uh, your consideration this morning, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Scripture and um, I'm going to ask that you would uh, think a little bit more analytically of the, of the text because sometimes uh, when we read a story, we, we jump straight to the highlight of that story. But sometimes there's lessons uh, that we need to learn that are hidden within some of the details of the story that we would otherwise miss if we're not paying attention. So I invite you to join Join us um, as uh, we look. We take a closer look at the story here. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. And the word of the Lord reads, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, them, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and waters, and they obey him. I would like to challenge you with a question. Um, regarding this text. And the question is this, who do you 
think you're dealing with? Who do you think you are dealing with? Join me as we pray. Father God, we thank you for once again uh, allowing us to glean from uh, the crumbs that are falling from your table. We ask, Lord, that you would endow us with the word. Bless us. Bless our hearts and our lives and transform us into who you would want us to be. I only ask that you give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech that I may be able to rightly divide your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Some of our favorite Bible stories uh, contain uh, some great and obvious lessons to teach us all. Uh, stories like the Good Samaritan, and other stories like the Parable of the Sower, and all of those wonderful Bible stories, stories like the houses on two different foundations. And, you know, we can glean from these lessons and these wonderful stories and, 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 and basically cling to the lessons that they teach us. Sometimes there are even greater lessons that are buried well, within those same Bible stories. And of course, I, the one that we're going to talk about today, we're going to do that to this one. But you could do that to any of the Bible stories uh, that we have in Scripture. The key is understanding those lessons, because understanding those lessons depend more on our relation to the text than just our understanding of the text. In other words, if we understand using our head, it helps us to know what happened. But what we need is an understanding with the heart because that will help us to love what happened. We love those uh, stories where God uh, comes through and he saves the day. We love those stories where evil is being defeated and good prevails. These stories usually contain someone who is in need of a great deliverance. And, 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 and these stories also contain uh, an evil character uh, or the bad guy per se who is seeking to destroy that individual. And these stories usually contain someone who has been supernaturally empowered by God himself uh, to come in and save the day. However, the story that we're looking at does not have those features. Uh, and after the day is saved, there is no encouragement, but a chastisement. And the lesson is in the chastisement that follows the quote unquote saving of the day. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever dealt with someone who came at you sideways, someone who stepped to you wrong, someone who said something that you felt, as the young people would say, was out of pocket, uh, someone that came to you in a way and you had to basically check them with the, que with the question that says, who do you think you're dealing with? Every now and then, you have that one child who think that they're old enough to consider themselves to be your equal. And when they roll up on you and they start to say whatever it is they're saying, you dismiss everything that they have said because you want to check the attitude that came with it. And you want to ask them, who do you think you're dealing with? And the reason why you ask that question is because the person that they sh you should represent to them, they don't see you in that light. And because they don't see you in that light, they're about to make the mistake of their lives by approaching you like that. Some of your mothers and fathers know what I'm talking about. And, and so you have to basically check them. Who do you think you're dealing with? I believe that there are times that uh, we think we know what God ought to be doing. And, and we have all the information that God needs in order to come in and do what we need 
him to do. And, and sometimes it messes with our understanding of who God is to the extent that we come at him in a kind of way. And, 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 and every now and then we need to take heed to what this passage offers us because in this passage gives us a moment that puts us back in the proper perspective when God says to us, who do you think you are dealing with? Actually, I wrote, who do you think you're dealing with? Either way it would work. Either way it would work. Let's look at the background of this text. First and foremost, if you look, read the, 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 the verses ahead, Jesus is teaching on the parable of the sower. He's talking about how one sowed seeds and seeds fell by the wayside. Some fell uh, on stony places. Some fell um, among thorns and others fell into good ground. And although Jesus is using the parable with a general audience, his disciples are the one who is closest to him. They get the, the, the most uh, complete benefit of Jesus' story because Jesus gives to them the full commentary on what the parable meant. Jesus breaks down all parts of it. So as Jesus is instructing his disciples, all of a sudden his mom and his brothers show up. And they're saying, Jesus, your mom and your brothers, your family's outside. And in response, and to further state his purpose, because Jesus was in his teaching element, he began to say to, his, to, to them about his disciples, this is my family, because those who hear God's word and those who put it into practice, that is my family. And I want to extend this to you. If you happen to be one who hear God's word and who puts God's word into practice, then he considers you a part of his family. It doesn't matter the, the whatever so-called blood relationship that Jesus may have had with Mary or Mary had with Jesus or his brothers. None of that matters. His family is made up of those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. And he said all of this while talking about his disciples. Now, it's important to note that Jesus was illustrating how faith works when we hear God's word. And when God releases a word and we hear it, it we ought to be motivated to put it into practice. So Jesus is teaching all that day. And after a day of te teaching, he creates a situation for the lesson to now be applied. In high school, uh, especially in the uh, science classes, you have uh, the, the period of instruction where you're sitting down with a textbook or you're taking notes from the lecture, but then you then take that information and you move into the lab where you're at the table practicing that which you have already learned. Now, Jesus took his disciples through the, the, the lecture portion of the lesson, but they're about to now go into the laboratory, except that they don't realize it. And what happens is that Jesus creates a situation that allows them to put what they had learned in the text. And if it's true that the Lord knows all, and we know that God knows all, then it's also true that the storm that was coming, he already knew it. As a matter of fact, he probably even sent it. And this is the aspect of God that most of us tend to struggle with. For God to create a situation where um, we, we uh, don't, uh, we, 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 when we experience uh, misfortune or we was, even evil to that extent, that somehow God is on the outside of that. But the prophet Isaiah uh, spoke of the saying that the Lord says, "I uh, make good and I, I, I make good and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things." The reason why it says that is because in order for God to have control over evil, he first have to know about it, he first have to author it, and he first have to allow it to exist because nothing can be created except or apart from him. With that being said, God does not cause evil to come upon us. God does not put 
evil on us. We got a whole nother adversary that do those things. And sometimes we don't even need the adversary's help for evil to come about. But yet God and his sovereign control over everything, he is Lord over it and thereby he sets the boundaries for which it would work. So in this case, we have the storm that's about to come. He knew that the storm was coming, but he speaks the word and says, let us go to the other side. The thing I want to ask you is if you believe that God knows all, which means God knows everything that you're going through. Matter of fact, he foreknew it before you knew it. It, it may have caught you by surprise, but it didn't catch God by surprise. The question I have for you is can you still trust God even though you're going through a storm? Even though you're going through some troubles and some difficulties, even though you're going through a hard place in your life right now, can you still trust God? The God who knows about the storm that you're going through. And in looking at this text, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you as it relates to who do you think you're dealing with? Because see, if you are going through the storm and the storm has you acting crazy, talking crazy, doing all kind of crazy stuff, then, then, then when you go to God, perhaps you're going to go to him out of pocket because you don't know who you're dealing with. So um, one of the things I'm going to point out to you, and, and I'm looking at this because the proposition is that we can trust God through the hard times based on the insights that are hidden in the text. And one of the things that's hidden in the text, when your perception of Jesus as a teacher is incomplete, when your perception of Jesus as a teacher is incomplete, let's go into this a little further. Scripture tells us that um, after a day of teaching, he then says, all right, guys, let's get in the boat and let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they all get in the boat and they go on to the other side of the lake. However, Jesus is still teaching. He is still teaching because he knows that a storm is going to come. And what he does is that when everybody gets in the boat, he goes in the boat and he lays down and he goes to sleep. What I'm getting ready to do when I'm getting done, when I get done with this, I'm going to lay down and I'm going to go to sleep. Because, you know, when you're teaching the word of God, it takes so much out of you that you got to, you got to, some of y'all preachers who, who know about this, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody say amen. But let's deal with this thing when your perception of Jesus as a teacher is incomplete. They knew Jesus, first of all, as master or rabbi in the text. Sometimes it is equal to the word teacher. And because uh, the teacher taught, the teacher, because the teacher says, okay, class dismissed, get in the boat, doesn't necessarily mean that the class period has ended. Jesus goes from teaching to training because he knows that this storm that they're about to find themselves in is going to test what they have just learned. That's why you need to be armed with the word of God. And I don't know anybody who thinks that they can be a, a, a developing, growing, maturing Christian without understanding and learning about God's word. If you separate yourself from the study of God's word, then, then, then it's easily, uh, uh, easily for the enemy to knock you around because you have no basis for which to call upon the Lord. And, and when you approach God, you don't know who you're dealing with. But nevertheless, in this text... Jesus goes to sleep. And all of a sudden, the Bible says a windstorm comes upon them. It comes right to them in the boat. It, it, it was like it was targeted. Now, be mindful of the fact that Jesus is sleeping while they are troubling. He's sleeping while they're struggling. Sometimes the struggle that you go through the struggle that you go through is there to help you as opposed to, uh, uh, to to put your life in danger. Because not every storm comes to trouble you, but to train you. This storm that we've been in for more than six months 
since we've been away from our churches. And this storm, as long as COVID-19 has been around, it's basically been a storm that, that has come to the church and allowed the church to realize, wait a minute, God has pushed us out of the building because he wants us to go through some more in-depth training because um, uh, he, he's trying to develop us in a way that we didn't know we needed to be developed. Because the word, God spoke a word, let us go to the other side. And now the storm comes, and now we're giving more respect to the storm than the mission God gave us, as if to say that the storm has more authority than the God who equipped us to go through it. Uh, see, when you think of Jesus as a teacher, you got to understand that Jesus is not only teaching, but he's training too. Some of you are going through boot camp right now, and the situation that you're going through that, that has you to the brink of leaving the church and walking out on God and putting down your faith, basically your perception of Jesus as a teacher is jacked up because it's incomplete. You don't realize that Jesus is allowing the storm to come to you to train you and that's why you don't know who you're dealing with. I want to move to this a little quickly. I want to go ahead and go to my next point. So understand that when it comes to uh, the, the, the understanding of Jesus being both teacher and trainer, all of a sudden the wind is kicking up, water starting to come into the boat. We're struggling, we're struggling, and we see Jesus over there sleeping. We're going to go wake Jesus up and, 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 get and let him know that we are about to die. Uh, so not only was their perception of Jesus as a teacher incomplete, the perception or when your perception of Jesus not caring about you is inaccurate. When your perception of Jesus not caring about you is inactive. This is what I'm in, 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 inaccurate. This is what I mean. When Jesus was there sleeping. And the disciples were trying to figure out how they're going to get this boat under control. And they realized that they think their lives are threatened. And they looked at Jesus. And like, how dare Jesus sleep on a time, at a time like this? Don't he know what I'm going through? Doesn't he know that I feel like I'm about to lose my life? Doesn't he realize that the only reason why I'm in this situation is because I'm trying to follow him. Only reason why I'm going through what I'm going through is because I'm trying to follow him. You, went, you mean the, all that investment, all that time and effort that I gave, all the many nights that I've been praying and, all, and, and everybody that I've been working with, all the money that I've invested when I was helping people People thinking that one day God's going to come through for me. And you mean to tell me I'm in this storm right now and God's going to walk out on me when I'm trying to raise these children, trying to be the best example that I can possibly be. And then and, that, and I'm getting treated the way that I'm getting treated. And you mean to tell me that God, you're sleeping at a time that I need you most. And the problem that I realize, I'm not, I don't realize it at the moment, but as I'm going through it, my perception of Jesus seems that he doesn't care about me, but because I think that he doesn't care about me, my, my perception of him not being able to care about me is inaccurate. And I need to understand that just because he's sleeping while I'm freaking out, that Jesus is putting me through an exercise of my faith to cause my faith to be developed. And I don't really understand what's going on right now. That's why I want to reach back to something that I said last week when I said that uh, that uh, uh, count it all joy when you fall into various trials because uh, for the trying of your faith is developing patience. And, but we ought to let patience have its perfect work because in the end we'll be complete and perfect, not lacking anything. The thing is that the struggle that you're going through right now, you need that struggle in order to be developed. Jesus is trying to develop a part of your faith that have been broken down for a long time and Jesus let you ride a while for a little while but now you reach this point in your journey that you're coming at him any kind of way. You think that the relationship with Jesus can let you come to him out of pocket to where you can correct him and say you ought to be helping us Lord trying to get this water out the boat you ought to be helping us Lord trying to keep this boat afloat you ought to be helping us Lord, trying to keep the mortgage and the rent paid. You ought to be helping us, Lord, trying to put food on the table. You ought to be helping us, God. And it's not that God doesn't care about those things, but God allowed this
this particular storm to come upon you because he's trying to develop your faith. But because of your perception of Jesus, since you don't know who you think you're dealing with, your perception of him not caring about you seems to be inaccurate. Because if you just listen to the things that you're saying, they are, and I'm going to use a seminary word, they are antithetical to what you know about him, according to what the word said about him. And it's causing you to throw out everything that you learned from the word and give the storm more respect than Jesus. Be careful that you don't let your mouth speak more authority to the trouble that you're in than the one who can save you from from the trouble. If you believe that God can do anything, then certainly God can bring you out of this. Once you take a look back in your history and think of all those times that God pulled you through, that God brought you out, that God brought you over, and God delivered you then, the same God who brought you through that can bring you through this. But your problem is that your perception about of him not caring about you is inaccurate. And how do you adjust the inaccuracies of the Lord? Go back to the foundation. Go back to what the word of God says. One of the things, one of the things that the word of God says is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm in the same boat with you, but you're bugging out while I'm sleeping. You're tripping while I'm taking a nap. What's troubling you? you is basically trap me trained because I can sleep through it and what you need instead of bringing God into your crazy learn how to join him in his peace even though the storms may be raging you can find peace in your soul but you can't do it if your perception of him not caring about you is inaccurate who do you think you're dealing with they saw him sleeping in the middle of a storm and they thought that he didn't care that he was about that they were about to drown but Jesus was actually showing them how to have peace in the middle of a storm sometimes we need to ask God to teach us how to have peace in the middle of a storm when things are going toxy-turvy and we can't make sense of it all. God, teach me how to have peace in the midst of a storm while you're using the storm to measure Jesus' care for you. Jesus is using the same storm to measure your faith in him. Whether you realize it or not, you, while you're thinking you're doing a good thing, trying to get Jesus uh, to join you in your crazy, uh, Jesus is looking at your faith and wondering where in the world is your faith? After all of those deliverance, after all of those things that I brought you through, you're going to question me now. Who do you think you're dealing with? And that's the title of this message. Let me move on. Let me move on. I got, I got another point I got to share with you. Mm. If your perception of Jesus as a teacher is incomplete and your perception of Jesus not caring about you is inaccurate, watch this. Your perception of Jesus not being able to save you is incorrect. When your perception of Jesus not being able to save you is incorrect. Listen to what was said to Jesus. In verse 24, the Bible says, and they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, or teacher, Master, we are perishing. In other words, God, the storm that's about to take us out is about to take you out. In other words, what you going to do now? I, I sat through your sermon when you was teaching about the parable of the soul. I heard what you said about those well, that, that fell on the wayside, that the enemy came and snatched up the word. I heard what you said about the word that fell on stony places and how they got happy for a moment, but after a while they fizzled away. I heard what you said about the ones that fell among thorns. And you said that the thorns of this life uh, choked out the richness of the word. The cares of this life uh, choked it out. But you also talked about those that fell on good ground. I want 
want you to understand, God, I put myself in that category. Because when you give a word, I receive it into my heart. But now we're dealing with something different, God. You've got us out here in the middle of this storm. And we're about to die all from following you, listening to you. What you going to do now, Jesus? You going to be able to save us now. Here we are in 2020, and yet we're still having a fight for justice and equality. We're still having to march in order to lift up our uh, our voices against police brutality. We're still being killed in the streets, and we're still having to uh, 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 go through all of the turmoil that we, all of our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers, our ancestors have gone through in this country. What you going to do about it, Jesus? Here we are 400 years after slavery, and they're still trying to put us back in Jim Crow. you got all of these different militias rising up, uh, threatening to take our lives. If the, the, if the election doesn't go their way, uh, what you going to do now, Jesus? Because now I'm starting to think that you don't have power to save us. And Jesus gets up. He says, you know what? Uh, let me let me interrupt the training exercise that you're in uh, because you don't know who you think you're dealing with. Uh, I'm not going to stop the wind from blowing uh, and I'm not going to stop the sea from raging uh, simply because you are uncomfortable. Uh, I put you in this situation uh, because the word that I spoke to you while we was on the shore, I want to see if your faith grabbed a hold to it. Uh, sometimes we can let a word get us excited to the point that we're dancing and shout because we feel good in the moment but sooner or later we got to say the doxology and we got to give the benediction they're going to turn the organ off the drummer's going to put his drumsticks away and you got to go out into that world and allow yourself an opportunity for your faith to grab a hold to the word that you've got but some of us, uh, we can only have church in church. Uh, but you need to learn how to have church uh, when you're going through your storm, uh, when the seas is raging, uh, when the wind is blowing. Uh, you need to learn how to have some church. You need to learn how to have church uh, sitting in the doctor's office uh, waiting for the medical report. Uh, you need to learn how to have church uh, even if you're sitting in a funeral home uh, making plans to bury your loved one. When the sea is raging, your faith still needs something to grab a hold to. And God said, I already gave it to you. Now I allow the storm to see if your faith can grab a hold to it. But here you are coming at me any kind of way. Here you are talking about I don't have the power to save you. I don't have the power to heal you. I don't have the power to deliver you. And you're getting mad at me because I won't deliver you from your storm. So let me teach you a lesson. Jesus got up and he spoke to the wind and the wind ceased. He spoke to the sea and the sea turned back into a a calm little lake and then Jesus looked at his disciples dead in the eye I'm sure they felt like wanting to praise him but Jesus I don't want your praise right now I came looking for your faith and I want to know where is your faith because the thing that I said I said let us go to the other side and since you've seen me move like this before surely I would have known that you would have known me by now that the same God that brought you to a storm uh, can take you through the storm. Uh, there's nothing you can go through uh, that my hand can't save you, uh, that my hands are not too short, uh, that I cannot deliver you. Uh, you got to understand who you're dealing with. Uh, the same God uh, that is with you uh, when everything was going all right, uh, the same God you were jumping and shouting and praising him for uh, when the word is going forth. Uh, now you're going to question him because you're going through a storm. I want to know right now who do you think you're dealing with? Are you dealing with a God that somehow lost his power? A God that has somehow lost his care for you? His ability to save you? Who do you think you're dealing with? 
The same God who's been with you in your yesteryears is same is the same God who is with you right now. I wish somebody on the live feed would say yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the thing is, if your perception of Jesus as a teacher is incomplete, your perception of Jesus not caring about you is inaccurate. Your perception of Jesus not being able to save you is incorrect. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add one more. When your perception, or better yet, when your faith in Jesus is inadequate, See, you run into problems when you say you have faith, but you don't really have it. You got inadequate faith. They realized they didn't know who they were dealing with. When Jesus asked them where their faith was, see, the thing about it is that after Jesus rebuked the storm, Jesus then turned to rebuke his disciples. I don't know how you're going to get happy on the point of Jesus rebuking you, but every now and then Jesus needs to check you because you done forgot who he is. You, you with that problem that you have, I know it's big for you, and it's supposed to be big for you, but if you just look right there, he's still there. He might be sleeping, but he's still there. And, and just because he's sleeping, doesn't mean he doesn't care. It just means that the sea and the storm doesn't have enough power to shake him out of his peace. You need to get to the place where the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, regardless of your storm. But how are you going to do that if your faith is inadequate? You can have faith in God whenever you're going through a storm, only when you know who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a God who can do anything, if you're dealing with a God who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you and I could ever ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. If that's the God you're thinking about, if that's the God you're dealing with, then you need to flip the script. Instead of telling God how big your storm is, how about tell a storm how big your God is? Look at somebody and say, I told the storm to pass because the storm doesn't know who you think you're dealing with. See, because of the thing that God has done in my life. Oh, I feel like preaching now. I feel like preaching now. Because of everything that I've been through in my journey I've learned enough about God that my God will keep me in perfect peace as long as I keep my mind stayed on him I'm not going to tell God about a storm that he brought into my life to develop my faith I'm going to stand and tell the storm what my God said my God said we're going over to the other side you might be raging but you're not big and bad enough to stop me from doing what God has called me to do so you got to understand if you ever want to know who you're dealing with this whole thing started when Jesus said, let us go to the other side. In other words, in translation, he says, commence exercise. He says, get in the boat, y'all. We're going to the other side. They get in the boat. He gets in the boat. He goes to sleep. And as soon as they get away from the shore, all of a sudden the wind shows up. There was no wind when they got in the boat, but it just showed up. The sea was calm when they got in the boat. All of a sudden, it gets trouble. They're not in the middle of an ocean, by the way. They're just on a lake, going from one side to the other. And Jesus is allowing this exercise to train them because he wants to know if they know who they're dealing with. But Jesus used it to teach them who they're actually dealing with. That's why Jesus corrected them and said, where is your faith? But if you believe God the way I believe him, then you know the same God that brought me to it will also bring me through it. Whatever storm you're in right now, 
I wish you had faith enough to say to the storm, who do you think you're dealing with? I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been saved. I've been healed. I've been delivered. I have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside of me. And I got a word from God planted in my heart that I don't know who you think you're dealing with. If you think I'm going to trip out, you should have caught me last year. You should have caught me before I got saved. You you should have caught me before I got excited about pursuing Jesus the way that I am. And now that I know who I'm dealing with, now you need to know who you're dealing with because I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to quit now. I'm going to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give him glory in this place. Somebody give him glory in this place. Who in the world do you think you're dealing with just because I had a little trouble. Just because you got me back in the corner doesn't mean I'm not going to come out swinging. Yes, sir. You might put me in the corner, but you can still catch these hands because I'm going forth in the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of me because I know who I'm dealing with. And because you brought the storm, because you put me through this, I'm going to make it through because you need to know who you're dealing with. If you're a word carrying believer, I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to close right here. Whatever. I go through a storm. I have to go back and retrace my history. And I have to look at the fact that I got the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside of me. I worship the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And because I worship him, because I serve him, because I love him, I realize now who I'm dealing with. And because I'm dealing with him, I understand that I was created to worship him. And I was worshiped to praise the name of my God so that whenever I go through a storm, I praise and I praise my way through it. I give God glory through it. I know I'm not crazy. I just need to let the storm know who, who, who they think you're dealing with. And when, and when you understand, uh, when the storm realizes uh, that I can't get him off of his mission, I can't stop him from believing. I can't stop him from praising. I can't stop him from, uh, I can't get him to worry and, and, and do what all the other worldly folk do. He's still praying. He's still holding on to his faith. The reason why is because I know who I'm dealing with. But do the storm know who they're dealing with? You need to shout to the devil, you don't know who you're dealing with. You done picked the right one now. Hallelujah. I feel like worshiping right now. I feel like giving God the best praise I have because I know who I'm dealing with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we close, if you're not saved, I invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ. I invite you to allow him to come into your life and make you the person he wants you to be. Pray this words with me. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm not worthy to be your child. Nevertheless, Lord, I ask that you, God, would come into my life and make me the person you want me to be. And I'll give you all the praise. I'll give you all the glory and all the honor. Save my soul and make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with us, Go ahead and send us a message and let us know that you have switched over. You've joined Team Jesus. You need someone to help you in this faith journey. We'll be glad to come alongside, take you in, and give you everything that you need to know about our Lord and Savior. And we worship him because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise from all creatures here below. Praise from above, your heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I feel like having church. Y'all forgive me. I didn't know I didn't do the affirmation of faith. And, and I normally do that, but I, I just feel like giving God. So you're going to have to give me a moment. 
I'm going to come off camera now so I can have my moment. Y'all be blessed. Y'all understand this. May the grace and the peace of God go with you as you go. May God keep you in this perfect peace as long as you keep your mind stayed on him. Who do you think you're dealing with? Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet spirit of the Holy Spirit, the sweet power of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us henceforth now and